All right guys, so in this tip, I'm gonna share with you when I use tissue conditioner and when I use a soft reline. So whenever I'm doing a full mouth extraction, I always am relining the denture. So I find that if I do use a tissue conditioner or soft reline, I just get a much better fit of the denture and the patient's gonna have something comfortable instead of something falling out. Honestly, both work just fine, but here are some key differences of both materials. So Linol is a tissue conditioner. And the thing about Linol is that it has a super long working time. And so that means that it stays runny and it kind of goes down the patient's throat and I don't like it for that reason because well first it's uncomfortable for the patient but secondly you're waiting around for a while for it to set up uh, second it does turn hard after a couple weeks and that can be uncomfortable for the patient with with it poking them uh, third it's not as stable within the denture I found I find that patients come back with a denture that has the line all sort of like washed out of it uh, and so it doesn't stay as well in the denture the last thing about Lionel uh, that I want to mention is that is it's inexpensive, so that can make it a material of choice if you're using it a lot. Uh, maybe that's why a lot of offices like to use it instead of soft liner uh, initially for an immediate denture. Now, Permasoft is my material of choice uh, for a soft liner. I really like to use this material. Um, it has a short working time. Uh, I'd say it sets up in about uh, two minutes or so, and you can take it out of the patient's mouth and put it in boiling water to finish the set. Uh, second, it stays softer within the denture, so while the patient's wearing it, they're going to stay more comfortable for a longer time. Third, it does stay in the denture for a longer period of time instead of washing out like a tissue conditioner does. Um, the last thing, and it's kind of, I guess it's a con, uh, is that it is more expensive. So it's pretty expensive compared to tissue conditioner, but I like to use it anyhow. It's definitely my material of choice. All right, so here's a video of me uh, just checking out this um, this Lionel that kind of washed out of the, of the denture already. So I'm gonna put a fresh layer. So Lionel is pretty, pretty easy to, to mix and, and put into the denture. Uh, it starts off um, a little bit thicker, but it gets real runny. So I make sure not to put too much around the palate so that way I avoid it going down their throat. So just to reiterate, I'm placing really minimal amount of material on the palatable part of the denture. Now as I'm putting, putting it into the patient's mouth, I seat the posterior part first and then I seat the anterior part so the material flows forward instead of back. And then I also take the patient's lips and just kind of make those border movements. I do that because it really helps uh, to emphasize all those movements and really helps to prevent overextension of your denture. See how even though I try to put minimal material, I still got some overflow towards the back. And so I use the, uh, the mirror to scoop it out. And now I just hold it in place. And I, well, there's actually more that's fallen out. So I'm just going to keep scooping and uh, just to make sure the patient doesn't gag on it. So now I'm just holding it there. I'm still creating more border movements. Um, you can actually ask the patient to help you by biting down. So when they bite down, then you can go ahead and, and continue to do the border movements. I move the, to, I move the front there just to get that frenum uh, visible there uh, in the tissue. And then I, I move her lips as well. In the maxillary arch is actually a little bit easier to do than for the mandibular one. I, I also like to ask the patient to open up and then move their jaw side to side and that helps prevent some of those overextensions as well. Some people like to have their patient smile and uh, purse their lips too. That, that works really well, but I like to just uh, help my patient out and do some of those movements for them. So now the material is all set. This uh, takes like eight to 10 minutes to set up. And now I'm just gonna go back to where the material extruded and I'm just gonna take a, a blade and just uh, cut that off. If you try to use a burr, that's gonna be totally impossible to remove. So I just, I just clean it off real cleanly with the, or just take it off real cleanly with the, with the blade. Careful if you're in a rush, I, I have cut my fingers before. All right, so the last thing I do wanna mention about relining is that I do my initial reline on the day of surgery, on the day of extractions. I do another reline three to six weeks after. Uh, that's soft reline as well. And then I do a final reline six months after with, with hard material. So a chair side hard liner or I send it to the laboratory for a hard reline. All right guys, I hope that helps.